Welcome to the Radical Departures podcast, your source for startup storytelling. We're your hosts, Abby and Chris. You'll hear informative discussions full of valuable expertise and actionable insight on the issues you face when launching and growing your startup. This is episode 20 of the Radical Departures podcast. Our guest today is Thomas Perret, founder of Mon Petit Placement. Thomas is based in Lyon and is in the process of changing how young French people invest their money. After stints working in asset management and the startup world, Thomas decided to create a service that would give the average French person access to better investment opportunities, as well as educate millennials about personal finance, with the ultimate goal of democratizing private banking. He's working with big-name French banks, and Mon Petit Placement promises to be a crucial player in changing how young people invest their money. So without further ado, here's episode 20 with Thomas Perret. So we're here in the studio with Thomas Perret. Thomas, welcome. Hi, good morning. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Perret. So uh, my name is, as you said, Thomas Perry. Uh, <laughs> That's an Americanized version of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did a French engineer school, Lensay, which is a engineer, but also statistic and data science type of engineer school. And during my, my study, I did two different ex- type of experience. The first one was a startup experience. So I work in a startup called Switch. And the, 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 the goal of this startup was to do a mix of Tinder and the French app Le Bon Coin. So the, the goal was to exchange products. So in, for example, if you, would, if you want to change your cup of coffee, you, you take a picture of it and you have other, not women like, like in Tinder, but other type of object and you could swipe. And if they don't match, you can send a, a message to, to exchange. So that was a, a nice experience two years ago which taught me a lot on the startup industry, on how you manage a team, how you manage a project, how you, you make business, how you make money, which was a failed. And I'm happy to, to, to have this fail because I'm sure it will be a, a good help for, for the future. And also during my study, I did some internship. And so I did that in uh, Natixis. I did a one-year internship in New York. I was advising pension fund on two aspects. The first one was the investment strategy, uh, in which products should they invest in order to hedge the inflation, the longevity increase, the wages increase. That was the first aspect. And the second aspect was, I'm also an actuary. So I was advising on the longevity risk because as people are living longer and longer, they have to pay pension each year more, and most of the time they do not have the the provision in order to to do so. So they have to make, they have to put cash to pay this pension. So we had some yogurt companies, which was more finally an asset manager, because they were paying much more in pension in, in the pension fund than uh, in order to develop their business. So these two experiences. Uh, with a third one, which is more like the friend and family, which were asking if I had a stocks in which they could invest and earn 100 percent in six months. So that's the three type of experience which helped me to uh, create Mon Petit Placement. So tell us about that. Yeah, so Mon Petit Placement came from, as I told you, the, the three, uh, I realized the three things that people, there's a a high demand for investing in the 30s-ish year people, year old people, but they don't know how to deal with the financial market, in which product to invest, how to invest. So there is a huge lack of education. So that was the first aspect. Also, when I work at Natixis, I saw, I realized that we could reach 6 or 7% return annually for some financial product distributed only to found institutional investors. So I said that maybe I could try to democratize this type of product as well as, as educated in an innovative way the, the millennials 
in order to democratize the finance industry to, to everyone. The, the, the dream I have is people to, to switch from uh, 90% of their savings in a livre A to, uh, I mean, 50% in an investing account, which could be multiplacement or could be other type like the crowdfunding industry. So, but I push for, for them not only to have risky assets like you can find multiplacement, but also uh, like real estate, crowdfunding, social product. But I think that's multiplacement which is equal to high risk and high return financial product should be part of everyone's portfolio. And you say there's a lack of education among young people. Was it also a hesitance to, to take a risk? Yeah, but I think that's, that's exactly the same. People don't want to take a risk because they are not educated. Because what is a risk in finance? That's a risk in one or two years to lose some money. But if you see the, the historic trend over like a five-year period, you, I, I won't say never, but you never lose money because, I mean, what are the financial products? It's, it's a good proxy of the, it's like the PIB. You have people who innovate each year. So you create value, the world's creating more value. So the financial market, which is a good proxy of that on a long term period, will always go up. So what I advise, I say, okay, I will explain you what are the risks, why you have to invest, how you have to do that. And you should do it. It's a risk if you do that with as a bet, if you don't know, and with 100% of your savings. But it's not a risk if it's only 20% of your investment portfolio. So how does Mon Petit Placement work with young people to educate them? I don't want to do a blog because I know that uh, when you do a blog about uh, financial market, it's boring. So I try to find a way using the gamification to teach the basis of the investment which are what is the diversification, why you have to invest on a long time period, why leaving all your savings on a livre is in fact losing money, why also leaving money on your livre is losing money because of the inflation, which is currently higher than the rate of the livre So I try to explain this basis knowledge only without words, only by making them play with some small game that you can find on multiplasma. Like simulations? Or... Yeah, exactly, simulation. So you, you touch uh, just this small game and you have uh, the different uh, type of product you will find in your portfolio if you are a more risky guy or a cool guy. You have uh, the simulation in order to see what the risk means in terms of the using the historic charts of the different products. So you can realize, oh yeah, I see that during three years I will have lose uh, 20% of my my investment, but I don't want to tell you a, a huge text saying this is how you should do that. This is the risk. I want to make them play because I know that otherwise uh, a young people, which is not educated, will never go and, and do the first step. And once he did the first steps, then that's my job to, to present this innovative product, to educate him and to make a process very smooth. So how does it work? So if I want to sign up. What do I do? The first uh, step is to get in touch with the universe of Multiplasma, which is what type of product do I sell? Because they are quite different from the life insurance or stock market that you can currently find. Then you have all these education tools. And once, so that's only your decision, once you say that, okay, I know now I am sensibilized on the fact that I have to invest some of my portfolio in Multiplasma, you can log in and you will get in touch with one of our financial advisors and he will advise you in one of our products according to what you told him on your, I mean, what are your objectives? What are your, your risk appetite? How much money do you have? And then, so he advise you on one product and then you choose if you want to follow his uh, advice and you invest on that very quickly. And once you've invested, can you uh, can you change later on? Can you say, oh, I want to, this is a bit too risky for me, change my mind? Yeah. I want to... So usually what, what we want to do is that if someone took the, the, the very risky uh, product, which is uh, which did like the 15 previous year, 15% per year on a, on a return, what we will say, what we will do is that, for example, the first uh, three years, you will stay on this risky portfolio and maybe you will have, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40%. And then if you had a six-year target investment period, 
we will switch each year to a less risky portfolio so that if the market lose a uh, 40%, you don't lose all, all your profit. But usually when the first two or three years, when we advise you on the product, it's better to, to stay on that. And then we'll make a strategy together to, to save your profit. So you're down in Lyon, you're not in Paris. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I'm both. I'm mostly in Lyon, okay. but uh, you know, the financial business is in Paris. So I'm working with some bank and I have to be in Paris. Okay. And how did you go about creating this company? Because it's a really cool idea. It's tricky because you, you've got different uh, obstacles. The first one is the law, uh, because you have to, to get an authorization from the French uh, financial market authorization uh, in order to be able to distribute financial product to retail investors. So that's the first one. And even it, it's not very tricky, it's like five months process. So that's step one. And then, as I told you, I only uh, work with asset manager we are not open to retail investor for the moment so the second step was to to find this asset manager to try to make partnership with them in order for their product to be able to to be eligible for retail investor and not only to the people who have uh, more than 100,000 euros to to invest and then you have to make the website so that's more a money issue because you can quite easily find developer as long as you have money. And the fourth step, which is the last step before we can launch uh, Mon Petit Placement, is that you have to be plugged with bank in order to open, to open the, the account which will be used to invest in the market. Because uh, you know, I, I cannot have the, the account on Mon Petit Placement. So what, what you do, you will uh, open your account through Mon Petit Placement, but uh, in the fact, it will be in a, in a bank and in order to, to be plugged, it's very, very long. So that's the last uh, mountain <laughs> to climb. And then we will be able to uh, launch multiplicity. And are there a lot of other innovative uh, financial solutions like this for investment these days? or Because it sounds sort of like a trailblazing project. Yeah, there are a lot of robo-advisor. And I think they, are, they have the, cell, the same uh, vision as me, uh, which is... Uh, we have to democratize financial product. So they choose a way uh, which is using the automatization and just you say uh, uh, how much you want to invest, what is your risk profile, uh, what is your experience in the financial market, and they will invest for you. But what I think is that for millennials, they want to understand, to, to, to see the trick, what is behind. So selling a black box maybe it's not the best idea for them. It, it will work for other populations. So. so I think that for this type of population, you have to try this to be more transparent and to explain what is behind and how it does work. So that's the, the choice of multiplacement because we are on a, on a niche, which are the, the 30, 35-ish year old people who have 2,000 euros, which they are ready to play with. And uh, so they have the solution now. And did you have to kind of evangelize with these asset managers to say, look, this is a population that's underserved and... Uh... Yeah, exactly. That was the first step. The second one was that bank has been rushing to the millennials since 10 or 15 years because they know that they are, there is a huge potential because they still have uh, 20 or 30 years uh, at least being active. And on the asset management and industry, there is not this... Um, Things which is that you will work with uh, with young people. They only work with uh, healthy people and people we have which are the, who have a lot of money. So when I talk to this um, asset manager, saying that why can't we do the same as the bank, which is targeting the the people with high potential, and they say yeah, that's we should we should try to do that, which is not the case for the moment. So that's how I got this partnership with them. So what so far has been your biggest obstacle? You had a lot of paperwork to do with the banks. That sounds like a, a painful process. Was it leaving the security of a big company? Was it the bureaucracy of setting this up? What's been your toughest part? The, the biggest one is to plug with bank. Not on a technical point of view, because we, you know, I've got five developers, so we can do pretty much whatever we want with them. But... The biggest issue is that they don't really know how to work with startup. And if you want a concrete example is that 
the bank I'm currently trying to work with, where the, the bank account will be physically, I have to pay, let's say, 10 euros per account because they have to, to do all the administrative work to open the account. And let's say that for the first year I'm targeting 1,000, 2,000 clients, which is around uh, 20,000 euros of fees with this uh, partner, which is which is okay. But uh, they don't know how to work with startup. They have a minimum fees per year, which is 100,000 euros, which means that the first year I will burn 80,000, which make it impossible. So this is currently the biggest um, obstacle because I'm okay to to pay the the price to plug with them because it takes some time on that side as well. But uh, I'm not okay to, to burn 80,000 of cash. So that's for me really the, the biggest obstacle because all the other one, I mean, with time, you can uh, can overpass. But this one, you don't need time. You need someone quite clever at the top of the bank, which understand the need of this client, the need of the market in order to, to say, okay, I will take this risk to plug with you, to make a step to you. Yeah, they're taking a leap of faith because, because it's something completely different for them. But yeah, but... I'm selling myself uh, myself at a marketplace they could use for, for the client because I'm more sexy for the client because I talk to them. I am innovative, which is pretty hard for a, a huge bank to be. So I say we, we should work together and I'm okay to, to lease you my, my marketplace, but uh, you have to help me just to launch. So that's the biggest obstacle, to work with, uh, with big traditional banks. That's tricky. We've had a couple guests lately talking about corporate innovation and the need for them to big traditional companies to try to embrace this startup culture and to change their own mindset. Yeah, we've had guests talking about how that's gone. And and it's interesting. Some have really made that leap and some have struggled. So I'm working with uh, with Kesdepan as it's my incubator. So they have an incubator, so they, we are 18 fintech, which means that they, they did the first step, which is we know that we have to work with startup in order to, to develop in this, in this path. But what I want is not only a speech, but it's like in the fact that they, they indeed work with startup because it's easy to, on a marketing point of view, to, to say, yeah, we have an incubator, we we invest in, in 10 startups, but if in the fact you don't really help them to, to develop and to, to launch, it's too easy. So will you have an exclusive relationship with, uh, with that bank or are you looking at a broader market? No, no, it's, it's just easier to, to launch with uh, the bank you are, you are incubated in, but I'm not exclusive at all. I'm just looking for the, the one who have the same vision as me, which is we have to target to help these young people to stop, put one hundred percent of the savings in a libra and help them to construct a, a portfolio for their future. And yeah, and for the moment, it's I target the, the first one, the one which was closer to me. But I am currently trying to to see other banks to see if they, like online banks. I mean online, so it's easy yeah. to plug. They already already understand the the difficulty of the market when you are only online, and it's easier. But it's less challenging and I think if you reach if you can plug with a with a big bank which has 20 million clients even if it's only a small client that's a very nice step for me and for them as well because uh, they can help their client not only to for them to come to on the Saturday morning to open an account but they can do that online because even if even a bank like BPC which is huge you cannot currently open an account online we are 10 years late so what I, this is why I'm telling them, I'm trying to help you. So just don't help me because uh, your minimum fees is not, uh, it doesn't cost you 100,000 euros. It's just that you want to earn money like a normal client. But I'm not a normal client. How, how receptive do you find other banks besides the online banks? I could see them being quite receptive, but other existing old banks here, are they open to ideas like this? Yeah, they are really open. That's that's for sure. But then it's quite easy to uh, to talk to the DG, to the chief digital officer because he wants to get ideas and uh, he's nice. But then for me, that's my own experience. But 
once you have to to take the risk, it's really hard to. It's not ideas. It's it's like a, a real stuff. It's hard to to deal with them. But they are really open to ideas, open to discussion, open to sharing experience. That's not an issue at all. Perfectly the first step, which is hunter the startup industry. Now they need to do, in my opinion, the second step, which is helping to work all together. Not only in their own interest, even if I understand that they need to have the interest, but making a bet on their future using this, uh, all these new innovative ideas. Now, you spent some time in New York. Did you see any differences with young people, American young people versus French young people in their knowledge and uh, risk taking for investment? Yeah, so it's tricky to say that in New York because you know that in New York, you don't have a lot of uh, real New Yorker. You have a lot of uh, foreign people. But yeah, at its, this, the city of the, the finance is more, uh, much more democratic than, than in France. The other country that's, uh, that was where it was impressive, the, the, the difference of education was the Swiss. Uh, I've been in Swiss to, to try the, the market and like, everyone has an investing account. And they don't have a lot of uh, real estate. I know that the, the return is much higher and that I have to invest on the financial market. In, in not only in life insurance, but uh, other risk products. So it's funny because uh, all the, the first uh, barrier of the education is, does not exist in, in Swiss and in some similar market. So that's the next uh, target for me because I know that Mon Petit Placement has different added value in, in France, uh, the, the, the innovative projects, the education, the process. But so if I go to the Swiss market, I will lose the education added value, but it will be easier to launch. So that's the, the, the second step of a development of, of the startup. And so how do you grow your company? Are you looking at organically growing, building people as you build clients? Are you going to do fundraising? Yeah. It's always the big question. Yeah. But that's a very interesting question. And that's exactly the question of the, of the moment for Mon Petit Placement. I wish I could do that the old way because... Uh, a lot of, of old people tell me that uh, you have to keep your capital as long as you can. So what I do as uh, most of the startup, startup I'm uh, sticking the public investment and then I will find some private. But I will try to, to minimize this uh, private investor because as one of my advisors told me, it's like uh, your home. If you have your, your big house when you can uh, walk naked, once you rent uh, one room, you cannot work naked anymore. So, and that's exactly the same in your, in your startup. So, so I don't want, uh, I still want to work naked in my startup, if you see what I mean. <laughs> so I, I am this type of guy who, who is okay to, for, the, for the business to be a bit slowly in order to, to pay with my own growth instead of uh, raising one million after six months and a second million after one year. Will you be bringing on other business partners? Will, how, how will you grow the company internally? Currently, you know, I'm, so I'm the only one. I've got five senior advisors, uh, mostly on the, from the finance industry, which help, uh, to, to, which help me to, to build this, all this finance education to choose uh, the good product. And then how I will develop. Once I've got the, the first client, I will begin to internalize some of the, the main aspect of Mobility Plasma, which is the, all the, the, the platform, the website. Then I need to, to get some financial advisor mm -hmm. in order to, to advise all of your small clients. And then last but not least, I will do all the, the web marketing, the digital marketing inside Mon Petit Placement. But currently, as I'm trying to do partnership with a lot of uh, already existing bank, fintech, which already has a client database, this part will come later. Because I know that the price to get one client like on Google. It's, it's so expensive in this industry that you have to, to make partnership with with big player right. already existing. So the big challenge is how you can solve the, which problem you do you solve from this bank in order for the bank to be okay to, to share his uh, database. And will you, moving forward, is this something you talked about, uh, uh, Switzerland, Will you grow the company in France, in Switzerland, other markets? Is this, because uh, the European, the banking industry is so fragmented. I know there's, 
there are new European wide laws that may have an impact on it. But how do you how do you build out the company, or so, at least now your vision? Because yeah, I, yeah, yeah, things change. We know that. <laughs> So the first region is is to propose different products, because currently I'm only on the, the the main added value of my product are the returns. Um, returns only if you want to have returns you cannot find elsewhere. Go to multiplacement. Okay, but I've got a high demand also to get more green products, to get water linked products, to get social products. So the first way of development after the launch of multiplacement will be to go on this side, which is quite tricky because you know that. The aim of multiplasma is to democratize some products which are not accessible to uh, retail people currently. And there isn't a lot of uh, green products, green financial products, which are not open to uh, retail people currently. The challenge will be to find this product, to go on this path, which is more social, green, water. So that's the first one. And then, yeah, it's to go on other markets. The two I liked uh, pretty much is, as I told you, the Swiss market and also the, the North European countries because they also are very educated on the investment process. And uh, as you told, uh, with uh, the, the new European uh, financial law, uh, MIFID two, which will begin just the beginning of 18, it, it will help for the European financial market to be similar. And for me, it will be easier to, to launch in different countries. That's yeah, it seems really treacherous now. I mean, Europe is very fragmented for a lot of reasons, but from a banking perspective, it, uh, oh, it's yeah. really tricky. So that's the two different ways of how I will develop uh, Mon Petit Placement. And I've got a, a third one, but it's maybe uh, longer that I've got a high demand for just the back office of Mon Petit Placement. You know, because currently there is a lot of uh, financial advisor. They only advise, uh, I don't know, 100 clients. Uh, it's small town, but uh, wealthy people, which so they 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 manage their two thousand euros or I don't know, but they they currently they do everything by paper, by phone or physically, mm. so they want to keep the advising part. But if I could do all the back office process with what's already existing in Montpellier, they would be happy to pay for that. So that's the third way of developing, which is not very sexy for me, but there is a very high demand on that. That's the third part. And then if the three worked, that would be already a, a nice a, a nice starter. Yeah. So to wrap up, what will success look like what for was, you? In five years, people say, remember five years before, we will we never invest. We lived all all of your money on a on a saving account and it was really not a good idea. That would be a nice success. So to really change the whole landscape. Yeah. In the mind. Okay. And in order, big. Yeah, in order to do that, you need to to show different products, to educate, and to make it simple. Cool. Uh, the three ways. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. You're welcome. Thank you to you too. That wraps up another episode of the Radical Departures podcast. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter and join us next time on Radical Departures.